Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the fall feast days. Now, we're over here in Leviticus 23, which is the only place in all of Scripture that you can find all of the feast days listed in one place. All of the feast days, including the Sabbath days. So we're talking about all of the holy convocations listed in one chapter of the Bible. The only place you can find that is in Leviticus 23. So what we're going to talk about today is the fall feasts. And we're going to give you enough information to, to know what it is that you're supposed to be doing so that you can, you know, get prepared for those dates. Um, some of the ones like uh, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot um, is a feast that some of you will will be staying in a tent. So you might want to get out and start looking for a tent big enough for your family. And so we'll talk about that kind of stuff in this video. All right, now first starting off, I want to show you right here in Leviticus 23 and uh, verse 2. Verse 2 is talking about, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Now, I wanted to bring out this verse right here. Because it is stressing that these are the feasts of the Lord. Now, there's a lot of people, you know, who, you know, fall for the old um, trick that these are the feasts of the Jews or the feasts of Moses, you know, saying that, you know, we aren't supposed to add, um, uh, adhere to these feasts and we're not supposed to keep these feasts. Well, not only are we going to learn that these are the feasts of the Lord, but we are supposed to keep these feasts forever. We're never supposed to stop these feasts um, according to the scripture. But I just wanted to point that out. So let's jump down to Leviticus 23 and 23 and talk about the first of the fall feast. Now, 23 says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Now, this is talking about the seventh month. Like we said, the name of this month is Tishri. And, you know, this is not a Gregorian calendar month. So it's the beginning of the seventh month that's talking about the sacred month. And on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath. Now, I want to point out, if you go in and you look in the King James Version of the Bible and look for the word Sabbath, you're not going to find too many times that it actually tells you when it is other than these feast days these are it tells you to honor the sabbath day it tells you on it's on the sixth day of the work week you work six days and you keep a sabbath day but when it actually falls what day it actually is the only time you're going to find that is over here in leviticus 23 related to these fall feast days this is pretty much the only time that you hear about it, but it does confirm uh, the Sabbath according to the lunar cycle. Um, you see the new moon, which will be on this first day of the seventh month, and that will be a Sabbath day. Um, on the normal Sabbath day, you're not allowed to do any work. But on this Sabbath day, being that it is a new moon day, you can do certain kinds of work, but it is the servile work that is forbidden on that day. I hope I didn't confuse you. But anyway, let's look right here. It says, um, right there, it says it's a holy convocation. Now, what that means is that you'll have all of your family in. You know, for me, it'll be uh, my wife and my kids. We'll all get together and we will, you know, fulfill these feasts. If the Lord, you know, sends them anybody else, it'll be a little bit bigger deal. Depends on how many people he sends. But it is a holy convocation. You know, it's everybody getting around and celebrating the Lord on these days. Um... Then it says, uh, ye shall do no servile work therein, um, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, this tells us pretty much what we have to do on the memorial of blowing of trumpets. No servile work. Now, notice that difference. It's not saying no work like Atonement Day is going to say. This one is saying servile work. And servile to me, you can look it up for yourself. Uh, make sure you understand it, how the, you know, the spirit leads you. But servile to me means hard work. You wouldn't do the, like the work of a slave or the work of a servant. You know, you wouldn't do any back-breaking labor. Whereas you might do stuff like uh, making a fire or you might do stuff like like uh, um, cooking or you might clean your house. You remember that we are just ending a Sabbath day right before this day starts. And so, you know, 
of course, you weren't able to clean your house on the Sabbath day, the day before or a couple of days before. And plus, you are getting ready for a holy convocation. So you may end up finding yourself doing some domestic kind of stuff that, that needs to be done, preparing food and that kind of thing. So I believe, like I said, look up, serve our work, but that's what it means to me. And then it says you shall... Um, Offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, that's a big deal. You know, you can look over. I can't remember exactly what chapter it is. Um, I don't want to go into that great a deal about these offering made by fire. I know you can read about how you do the offerings made by fire over there in Leviticus uh, chapters one through seven. But when it comes to um, the memorial of blowing of trumpets, there's um, a few verses in one of the books. I'll, I'll take care of that in another class, looking at all of the offerings that you're supposed to do uh, for the memorial of blowing of trumpets. And they're a big deal. Um, let me see. Yeah, let me go over there and just look at it now. Let's see. Before you're thinking, oh man, I ain't nowhere in the world. I'm gonna find a bull, and if I can find a bull, how in the world am I gonna burn it up? You know, in a in a night. You look over here in uh, Malachi in chapter three. We see that the uh, Lord, our Father, is gonna bring those sacrifices back. There's coming a day when these feasts will be performed again. That's what it's saying there in verse three. Is how he's going to uh, purge the Levites first, uh, purge them like silver and gold, clean them up. And then after that, they will be start. They will start to make the offerings again like they did back there in Judah and Jerusalem. That's what uh, three and four is saying. Jumping back over to Leviticus 23 to verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, also on the 10th day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This is talking about the day of atonement. All right. It's on the 10th day of the seventh month. This is the second of the fall feast. It's 10th day of the seventh month. There should be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation. So it's a big deal. You know, it's a, you know, if your families are abroad or all of that, if your children are grown, you know, they'll come in and you guys all get together the same way, you know, you used to do for, you know, the holidays like, you know, Christmas or Thanksgiving or, you know, them days like that. Some people still celebrate those days. Well, notice those are big family events. Um, they got that idea from these feast days. We're going to talk about tabernacles here in a second, but that's like a week long uh, feast of uh, Thanksgiving. Believe it or not, uh, I believe I'm, I'm I'll, I'll bet money on it that the very first um, tabernacles was actually a Thanksgiving celebration. But, you know, we'll talk about that in a second. Right now we're talking about the Day of Atonement. It is a holy convocation unto you and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, we've talked about this offering made by fire. Now, the one on atonement day is a little bit different. Just like over there in that um, last passage we looked at about um, the memorial blowing of trumpets. If you want to get more detail about the events that will happen on the Day of Atonement, you have to jump down in Leviticus chapter 16 and look and you will start to see about uh, the scapegoats where they was actually supposed to uh, get two scapegoats. You see right there in verse 6 it says, And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering which is for himself to make an atonement for himself and for his house and then it goes on to talk about these two uh these two goats that they were supposed to have you've heard of the word scapegoat um this is where they you know one goat was killed and eaten while the other goat was released into the wilderness that was what they called the scapegoat uh, that was what took place on atonement day Look at that part right there. It says, and you shall afflict your soul. Now, that's important. We're going to find out in a second there that, you know, people are going to get in trouble if they don't afflict their soul. Matter of fact, let's come back to that. Let's read verse 28. It says, and you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Now, this is a big deal. 
First of all, you see how he's saying that you shall do no work. Now, up there in the other feast, it said no serve our work. But then this one is saying no work at all. So you really need to have this day off. So some people are going to have to learn. Some people are going to have to take off work this year because, you know, of some of this stuff is going to talk about down here. You see right there in verse 30, it says um, that same soul that shall, you know, do any work will be destroyed. So you really need to, you know, take off work on that day. And that's one of the main things that we need to do aside from the um the offering made by fire there is to take off work for for this day of atonement but uh let me jump over here to the book of revelation and show you something right quick uh, maybe you guys can help me out with this uh, this is coming out of revelation in chapter 8 but when you look here and you read um, the book of Revelation and chapter 8, particularly in verse 3, this looks like the Atonement Day celebration here that they're talking about. Um, you remember there was one time in the year that they was actually supposed to go and do this celebration. Well, when you look at Revelation in chapter 8, it looks very much like the celebration that was supposed to take place in the book of Revelation. I mean, I mean, in the um, in for Atonement Day. But then but the thing is, when you look down there in verse five, he's talking about this earthquake. He's talking about the thunderings and the lightnings and the voices which he which we hear about is going to signal the day of the Lord or the hour of the conscience or the great awakening, as people call it. It's like this atonement day celebration happens first there, as you see in verse three and verse four. And then he starts talking about this earthquake down there in verse five and verse six. And then you see down there in uh, verse uh, seven and verse eight, you have these trumpets sounding. Now, we've done plenty of classes on this, how the great awakening or the day of the Lord or the hour of the conscience happens before the trumpets blow that's important before the trumpets blow you know we're waiting for those trumpets to signify the the um the the tribulation the apocalypse you know that great earthquake um before that happens we have these events that happen here this this kind of uh temple being open some people talk about it the third temple all of that happens beforehand and that's why we need to be paying attention to these feast days guys we want to be right with our father you know there's plenty of channels that you can look at where people are talking about the rapture this and the great awakening that and the third temple this and you know they they are you know basically trying to set dates for those and tell you that they believe that these uh days that those events are going to happen on this day or that day but, you know, they're not really telling you what you're supposed to be doing to prepare. And that's why you come over here to coach in the fight is because we're telling you what it is that you're supposed to be doing on those days to get prepared for that. And what it is that we're supposed to be doing on atonement day, you're supposed to be afflicting your souls according to um Leviticus 23 and verse 27, you're supposed to be afflicting your souls, doing an offering made by fire that we've talked about, and you're supposed to be uh, taking the day off work like you see there in verse uh, 28. Now, let me jump over here to Isaiah, um, covering more the, um, than I expected to, but you know, I'm, I'm going to follow the... the uh, um, that what the Lord wants me to do because you know a lot of people need this information but I'm gonna jump over here to Isaiah and 58 because it is the only chapter of the Bible that tells you what it means to afflict your soul um, the, the, you know there's a lot of people who say fasting has something to do with abstaining for food uh, abstaining from food and like I said I've been doing this for you know almost 25 years now and for about 20 years almost 20 years that's how I celebrated the day of atonement by uh, abstaining from food and I tell you that nothing ever really happened for me in a good way until the Lord put it on my heart uh about by way of my wife about this Isaiah 58 we were having a discussion one day and we realized that Isaiah 58 actually describes what it means to afflict your soul and what it is that we're supposed to be doing on the sab on atonement day you see there in verse 5 how he's kind of uh, chastising the people a little bit and say that you know that you're doing this wrong you know is this the way I told you to fast you know to you know is that is that the way I never told you to fast like that and it's right you go through the Bible never ever 
does it tell you to abstain from food and put ashes on you whatever it is that they do you know to afflict their souls until you get up here into um isaiah in chapter 58 and then you see right there in verse uh six he says ain't this the fast that i told you to do to loose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke so this is what we are supposed to be doing on the uh, atonement day is this is this is the way we are supposed to be afflicting our souls verse 7 says is it not to deal the bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out into the house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not hide not thyself from thine own flesh now that that's how we that's what we're supposed to be doing we're actually supposed to be helping each other and when you think about it it kind of makes sense you know atonement day is supposed to be a big day when it comes to the the lord's uh, eschatology the lord's plan atonement day is supposed to be a pretty rough day you know it's going to the altar you know it's going to be a human holocaust you know event you know it could be earthquakes it could you know like we read about over there in revelations uh chapter eight it could be you know uh, volcanoes it's, it, and one day is going to be something that's going to affect humanity in a bad way well you can imagine that the father would have his people out there trying to help others pulling them out of rubble maybe feeding the hungry you know you got people out there that you know houses may have burned down and you may have to give them clothes or you may have to give them something like that well this is the actual stuff that we are supposed to be doing and then like you look over there in um, 8 and uh, uh, verse 9 of this chapter you'll see all of the blessings that you know come with doing a uh, fast or afflicting our souls in this manner and as part of my testimony I could tell you guys that the first year that I actually did it this way I believe it was 2018 the first year that I did a fast in this manner that you see up there in verses 6 and 7 I got all of these blessings that you see down there in verse 8 and 9 this is serious stuff and like I say, it's going. One day, it's going to be really important because you know our father is going to be dependent on us. He's going to be dependent on us to help to help his people. Um, you know, he do have angels out there that you know are supporting humanity, but those they are in the spirit world. They don't have a motive force. E equals M C squared means because they're in the spirit world, they can't really do anything. They can't pick a rock up off of somebody. You know, they they need other humans to help them to carry somebody some food or to get somebody some clothes and so if we are the ones that's going to be willing to step up and do this stuff then our father will be using us during the tribulation and that's important if we want to survive the tribulation because we're going to need that angelic help and then we need to go ahead and prove to our father and prove to ourselves that we will be good stewards so that when something does go down, you know, we'll be on those. We'll be on that list of people that our father will call to do his work to actually, you know, to to, to be the ones to go out there and help the rest of humanity. Um, that's what's going to help us to survive this tribulation. All right. So let's jump back over there to um, Leviticus 23. Let's see. Let's read 28 first, just in case. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is the day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. And um, one thing else I can say before we move on about this, this is important to, you know, our spiritual walk. A lot of you guys are brand new. You know, even if, even though you may have been with the Lord for a long time, a lot of you guys, this is going to be the first time that you've ever started to keep these feasts. And so um, the memorial blowing of trumpets is the gathering of his people. So that's when they're going to be called together. But atonement day is when they're going to get a uh, redemption or reconciliation. And so that kind of thing is going to go. I, I believe that's what atonement it means I would have to go look at the definition of that word but this is kind of um, the the time when you know we're kind of purified and kind of put back in the fold or what whatever um, but let's go on verse 29 says for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day he shall be cut off from among his people let me put my glasses on here um, but that's 
like we was talking about what it means to do to afflict your soul. Well, look at this. He's saying that anybody that don't do that on atonement day will be cut off from among his people. And his people he's talking about is his your spiritual brothers. See, you and I, we're spiritual brothers. We are a spiritual family. We're really all we have. You know what I mean? If you've been walking with Christ for a long time, you know that your um, biological family, you know, a lot of your biological family have turned their back on you. That should remind you of, you know, how the father, he said that his mother and his brother were those who kept the law and those who are obedient. We're going to have to depend on our spiritual family. We are each other's brothers and we are each other's sisters. And that's what it means by getting cut off from among your people. If you don't afflict your soul during that time, you and I are going to be cut off. You know, we're not going to, you, you, we're, we're, we're not going to be in good communion like we are now. There's going to, there's going to be something that's going to separate us. And we're also talking about those individuals in the spirit world. Um, this this is a bigger deal, you know, and this is a lot about what's going on in, in the world right now. That's why, you know, so many people have a hard time understanding spiritual stuff. You know, it's because, you know, they're cut off. You know, they ain't think they got cut off last year and they haven't done what it takes to get back in the good graces of our father. And they're going to get cut off again this year. Well, we need to learn to start keeping this feast so we can stay, stay with our father, stay with with our people all year long. You see right there in verse 30, it says, and whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, that soul will I destroy from among his people. So you know, look at this one. Now you're going to be destroyed. And, you know, you know, I talk about this a lot in my, in my classes, some of my videos, how the law is not made for old times it's not really made for now that's why you see so many people breaking the law breaking the sabbath day uh breaking all of the commandments i say just about every commandment is being broken in one way or another you know especially the first four commandments you know we're worshiping other gods you know some people are we are you know taking the lord's name in vain um we are you know just doing a bunch of different stuff and nobody's getting punished for it well the law is the instructions for surviving the tribulation. I say that slowly so it can sink in. There's coming a day when if you're not obedient to these laws, we're going to die. You're going to die. And in particularly this one about atonement. So that's what we were saying um, um, a few minutes ago about that Holocaust. Imagine all of the people who aren't aware of these requirements of atonement day and are not going to be doing this thing right. There's a lot of people that's going to die on atonement day because they're not aware of these rules and these regulations, you know, and, and, so, you know, we need, really need to be paying attention. We really need to be careful. You know, it ain't, you, you notice it ain't that big a deal to keep these feasts. What is it? He's asking us to take off work, to take a day off work. How hard is that? You know what I mean? Uh, to, to look out for our brother, like we read over there in Isaiah 58. How hard is that? You know, especially when it talks about us surviving a tribulation, you know, uh, you know, it's not that hard. You know, back in um, back in March or so, I remember having this conversation with one of my family members when it was time for him to drink wine. There's one festival of the year where we're supposed to drink wine. And I look I look at this, this individual. I say, you know what? You drink alcohol. You drink liquor. You drink beer. You drink whiskey. You drink this. And you mean you're going to go to hell. I said it. I said it like that. I said, you're going to go to hell because you wouldn't drink wine on a certain day. You know, how silly is that? You know, what I mean, you drinking every other day, but, you know, you wouldn't partake in drinking wine on Passover. And, you know, you eat bread every day. You, you're not going to eat, you know, bread on Passover. You're not going to drink wine on Passover. That's going to be the reason, you know, that you don't survive the tribulation and you drink anyway. That, that don't make that don't make no sense. But, you know, that's the way it is. You know, these holy congregations are celebration days. And so people are going to get in trouble because they're not they don't want to party on the Lord's Day. They don't want to have a good time on the Lord's Lord's day like the bible says and so they're they're, they're going to get in trouble for it that's really silly but let's go on verse 32 says it shall be unto you a sabbath of rest and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at evening from even to evening you shall celebrate your Sabbath day. Now, this this right here is another Sabbath day. It's the day of atonement. Now, you say, well, how is it that, you know, you're supposed to meet the requirements of 
Isaiah chapter 58 and have a Sabbath day at the same time. We're talking about praying for you for each other. You know, there's going to be like we said, it's going to be a day when you'll go out there and you'll pick the, you know, the rubble off of somebody. And that will remind you of the Messiah and how, you know, they accused him of breaking the Sabbath day because he was out there helping people during the Sabbath day. So you can imagine, you know, one day it'll be like that. We'll be out there helping people during the Sabbath day, maybe after an earthquake or after a volcano or after a hurricane or whatever and that's perfectly acceptable that's why our father you know gave us that example when he said you know if your ox was stuck in a ditch wouldn't you get him out well if your brother is stuck under his house wouldn't you go pull the house up off of your brother and help your brother even though it's a sabbath day but, you know, if there's no events going on, like last year, there wasn't much events like that going on, then we'll spend time praying for our brother in their absence and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and it says uh, a Sabbath of rest and ye shall afflict your souls. And then it talks about on the ninth day of the month at evening from even to evening shall he celebrate your Sabbath. And that's how you're going to celebrate that atonement day. Very, very important stuff. Now, we get down here in verse 33. We got to switch gears. Um, if you guys were here, we'd talk if you had any questions about atonement day. If you do, you know, put them down in the comment section. Um, but we're going to go on and look at verse 33. Going to change gears and talk about the next holy convocation. Verse 33 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Now, this is a week long feast. Um, notice that first, it starts on the fifteenth day of the seventh month. Let's jump back over there and look at it. See what it is that we're supposed to be doing. It says on the 15th day of the seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacles. And tabernacles means booths. Tabernacles means tents. You remember the first tabernacle that Moses built over there was made out of a tent. It was a tent. They walked around in the desert. Oh, not desert. But they walked around in the wilderness for 40 years with a tent. You know, even longer than that, when you think that they actually didn't build a temple until you got to Solomon's time, which was after King David and after King Saul and after the uh was it 40 it was 400 years of judges they they had a tent for a long time the 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 father dwelled in a tent or a tabernacle for probably about 500 years or so and, you know, that's part of the reason why you have this tabernacle celebration and it lasts for seven days. And it says on the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So imagine you have a family. You know, a lot of you guys do. You know, that's why you are 144,000 or that's why you are chosen to be a multitude of people that will survive the tribulation. It's because you have families. Don't let nobody fool you about that whole virgin thing. Our father has no need for a celibate man or a celibate woman. The first commandment of the Bible was to be fruitful and multiply, to have children. And that is the purpose of, you know, the 144,000. That is how they're going to save humanity is because they're actually going to have children that's going to repopulate the earth i got seven kids you know what i mean and if each one of my kids have seven of their own children you know that's 50 people that's you know ready and then if they keep going how quickly it is that we're going to repopulate the earth but it's just going to be a matter of you know them finding and marrying some of you guys whose children you know are obedient to the the covenant and the commandments you know and then they can actually you know um keep humanity going without these people and these families humanity would die and you know like i said that's the purpose of these these people that's going to survive the tribulation is they will go on just like noah did you know just like noah survived the, the flood there him and his family was the only ones that survived the flood and you know they went on to repopulate the earth well the hundred and forty four thousand and that multitude that no man can number are going to be like a bunch of noahs and they're actually going to go and repopulate the earth the earth is not going anywhere for for a while there's people going to still be here having babies and getting married but it's only going to be those that actually survive the tribulation um and those that survive the tribulation will be keeping these feast days 100 percent, i guarantee it those that don't keep these feast days notice notice that people who say you ain't supposed to be keeping these feast days are the same people that's talking about going away 
going into the spirit world. They, they actually planning on being removed from the planet and going into the spirit world where they're going to be there for who knows how long. They, they ain't even planning on surviving the tribulation. They ain't planning on being here anyway. Well, it is because these rules that, we're, that we read about over in the Torah, in the first five books of the Bible, it is these rules, these instructions. They call it the law. These are actually instructions for surviving the tribulation. So you can imagine your family's coming in on this day on for this week long feast. Well, it's just on the first day of this week long feast that is a holy convocation. You know, they 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 may go back home if they live, you know, close enough or whatever. Um, they're not really expected to have the, the convocation part except for on, you know, certain days of this week long feast, the first day and the last day. And then they could be gone for the rest of the week. Um, on the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Now, here we're talking about servile work. It's not saying do no work. It's talking about servile work. But this one actually falls on a Sabbath day, you know, and normally you would do no work on the 15th day of the month because it is a Sabbath day. But, you know, this is a big event. And you can imagine there's going to be have to be some cooking going on. You know, if you're going to do a holy convocation with all these people involved, you know, there could be a lot of people that come for this and it could be, a, you know, a lot of stuff that has to get done on this day. So he doesn't put so much of a restriction on us. We, we are limited to not doing any servile work, meaning, you know, you won't be down at the factory pumping out widgets or, you know, you won't be cutting down trees or, or that kind of thing. Then verse 36 says, seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And on the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly and you shall do no servile work therein. Now, this is important because there's actually two ways. The way I understand it, we can get in the comment section and we can talk about it. But the way I understand it, there's two different ways of celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. One is this solemn assembly. Now, this and I, there's some little bit of speculation here. That's why, you know, we could jump down in the comment section and talk about it, you know. Um, but this to me, this solemn type assembly, it, to me, it's for the new people, the early, the, the people who are just now getting into this. The Lord hasn't, you know, done much in your life yet. You've been dependent on the B systems, depending on your jobs and your money to provide you with your food, clothing and shelter. And the father hasn't really made a whole lot of provisions in your life yet. Well, you can imagine you don't have, you know, these people, they don't have a lot of land. They don't have any animals. You know, I'm talking to one individual. He doesn't even have a yard. He, he lives in an apartment building and he doesn't even have a, a, a yard at all, you know. Um, well, there's not a place for him to go and, you know, sleep in a tent like we're going to read about here in a few minutes. He he is, you know, expected to do this solemn type assembly. He talks about this offering made by fire there. And um, we talked about that. And what does it say? Um, no servile work, because this is the eighth day. I've never really pronounced these words here. I mean, try to Shemini Azeret Simchat. Torah and you'll have another holy convocation on that day. Um, so it's like you'll go the whole week celebrating. And then on this eighth day, there will be a big deal. Now, this is a big deal. Uh, this eighth day celebration is huge. When it, when you look at eschatology, when you look at scripture and all of the events that happened in scripture on this eighth day, this is a big deal. You know, this is, you know, people talking about watch. This is a very important day. At this eighth day celebration here and it is another holy convocation where you expect your family to come back you know to to actually celebrate with you on that day or maybe you know you'll go wherever they at and you'll celebrate them celebrate with them on that day all right uh let's go on to the next verse now like i said in this one it this is one type of way of celebrating the um the the uh, feast of tabernacles. Now, I'll give my own little testimony here. There was one year when I did it this way. The solemn assembly. You know, this was the only thing I followed was the rules here in thirty six. And I believe I got in trouble that year. The year before, I had done it in the way that we're about to read about. But I, you know, I was looking here and I was like, you know what? Um, maybe I'm only supposed to do this according to the way, you know, we see there in verse 36. And, you know, that was a very bad year that that started on that feast. 
actually, you know, so many bad things happened that years like I went backwards. Whereas before, up until that point, I had been under the graces of our father. He was blessing our family. You know, a lot of things were going right as far as our homestead and our family. And, you know, everything was going really, really good until I made this this horrible decision to actually only keep this feast now if this is if you knew i would say this is the one you're actually supposed to be doing but if you've been keeping the feast according to what we're about to read down here in um um these verses 40 and uh 39 and then you stop all of a sudden and say you're gonna do it this way up here like in verse 36 you you're gonna you're gonna make an error don't do that you know like i said if you knew do it this way and i hope i'm not confusing you if you knew you're gonna do it this way and you'll see why in a second but if you've been if you're old if you've been with the father for a long time you should be doing it like we're about to talk about here but you see it you see the transition right here in verse 37, where it's talking about all of these um, these offerings that are supposed to be made. But he's actually summarizing all of the offerings that are talked about in the entire chapter of, you know, 23, which includes uh, Passover, Atonement Day, uh, Unleavened Bread, Pentecost. All of those um, offerings are summarized right there in 37. And verse 38, you see them summarized in both of those. But then when you get down here and you look at verse 39, it says also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of your land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Now, this is this is the reason why I made that decision to only do the feast according to what we read up there in verse 36 was because of how this says uh, when you have gathered the fruit of the land. And I was sitting back there thinking, I was like, man, I ain't got no fruit of the land. You know, I ain't got no fruit this land. You know, I got land. You know, the father had just blessed me with some land. And that was part of the confusion because, you know, there was no fruit. There was no, we was kind of hungry back then. It wasn't, we, you know, we, you know, had spent all our money on this house or whatever. And, you know, there was no fruit. The trees weren't, you know, delivering any fruit. Pecan, we got like 50 pecan trees on this land. And there wasn't a nut on the ground nowhere for us to eat. And I'm like, you know, we ain't got no fruit. And so I decided to do that solemn feast up there. And I believe I got in trouble for it. Um, but you know, after you start keeping these feasts and after you start obeying the Lord, you'll notice that it'll move pretty quickly that he'll start blessing you with land and bless blessing you with fruit and all of that. And don't think materialistically. This fruit is spiritual, spiritual fruit. And I think that's where I really went wrong is that I was thinking only materialistically and I wasn't thinking about the uh, spiritual fruit that he had given me. And I was supposed to actually do the feast according to the way we're about to read here. Um, I say all of that, you know, because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Tell them they can do it one way when they're actually supposed to be doing it this way. By default, I would say do it this way if you can. You know, it says you should keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Now, notice I don't I don't believe we read that up there where it talks about a feast unto the Lord for seven days. Up there in 36, it was a solemn occasion. Uh, where you was just doing um, offering made by fire. You had the first day celebration and the eighth day celebration down here in verse 39. He's saying you're supposed to feast all week long. Notice the difference. Now it's a week long feast. So instead of your children going back to their house or whatever, now they look like they may stay at your, your place and you guys going to have this week long feast for seven days. Uh, it says on the first day shall be a Sabbath and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And that's a little bit different different than what we read up there because the uh, first day was a holy convocation and the eighth day was a holy convocation. So that's that's a little bit different too. These are separate feasts. Like I said, get in the comment section. Let's talk about it if you disagree. But I believe these are two different kinds of ways of celebrating the same feast. Verse 40 says, and you shall take you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bowls of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. See, these this are the promises of the Bible, guys. Our Father promises us food. He promises us clothes. He promises us something to drink. And, you know, we kind of almost expect him to give us shelter out of there, but, you know, it's not really promised directly like the like the. Messiah said, you know, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head or whatever. But, you know, he he does bless us with land and, and houses and, you know, praise the Lord for that. 
Well, when we get this stuff, you know, we get trees. You know, I said I got 50 pecan trees on this land. Well, if I got pecan trees and oak trees, cedar trees, cherry trees and orange trees and, you know, all of this stuff was put here on this land before I got here. Well, it is during this time that, you know, we'll actually go out and we'll pull off a branch off of, you know, these trees and our family will walk around like it's talking about here. And, you know, for seven days, you know, I don't know, we, we grab these branches and it's just the way we do it. You know, each one of us grab a handful of branches and we walk around with blowing on the trunk, blowing on the shofar that we have. And we are uh, singing songs and we just walk around the land, you know, waving these branches or whatever. Ever to, to meet this requirement here and uh, we don't have any palm trees or whatever but you know we just grab the goodly trees that's around that, that you know the father has provided us with and we do this for seven days you know we do it probably once or twice you know for seven days and we walk around you know as we have in these feasts or whatever to to make sure that we are in the requirements of these feast days and that's what I believe it's all about is doing the best that we can with what we've been given you know and it to me it, it, the more I try to get it right, the more the father gives me to allow me to get it right. You know, back when I first started back in 2014, I didn't have any sheep. You know, I didn't have any trees. You know, I didn't have, you know, a lot of this stuff didn't even have a shofar or whatever. But the more I've been trying to do this stuff the right way, the more he's been adding on to my family and I helping us to get this stuff right. Let's see, verse 41 says, And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Now, notice this part right here. He's saying you should do it forever. You're never supposed to stop this. Now, the Tabernacles is a mandatory feast. We read that over there in um, uh, several places that there are three mandatory feasts. Um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Pentecost and Tabernacles. You say, well, what about Passover? Nope, it's not mandatory. What about first fruits? Nope, it's not mandatory. Pentecost is mandatory, but first fruits is not. Atonement Day? Nope, apparently it's not mandatory. You know, I, I don't know if I would avoid doing it because of them things about, you know, dying or whatever or being cut off from your people. The memorial blowing the trumpets? No, there are three mandatory feast days. And, you know, each one of those feast days, those mandatory ones say that we are supposed to keep those throughout our generations forever. We're never supposed to stop. And for those people who argue that, you know, these feast days aren't supposed to, you know, take place. I ask them, what does forever mean? The Bible says forever. What does that mean? Does that when 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 does forever stop? I remember asking a preacher one time down at the church, when does forever stop? You know, we, it says that we're supposed to be doing this forever throughout our generations. You know, at, the Bible is real. Every word is real in the scripture. You know, we, we're supposed to be doing it forever. Um, you should celebrate it in the seventh month. Now, notice this part down here. Like we've been talking about, it's two different types of ways of celebrating this feast. Well, you look up there in 36, you don't see nothing about dwelling in booths. Look at verse 42. It says, ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that Israelite born shall dwell in booths. Now, this this right here, Israelite born confuses people because people are still thinking uh, materialistically and they're not thinking about um, spiritual Israel. We just posted up a class. We not posted up a few of them talking about who spiritual Israel are. Um, these these are. The people who, you know, the father has his focus on, you know, people who are obedient to the law, people, you know, it, it has nothing to do with blood ties. Now, you can't really look at the people over there in Jerusalem and say that that's Israel. Those are the people that's trying to cop out. Those are the people who are trying to avoid the Torah, trying to avoid the rules and say, no, nah, it's written for somebody else. Uh, uh, No, it's actually written to you. You know, you read over there in the book of I think it's Esther. That, you know, when the Babylonian people, it didn't say that they became Jewish. It said that they turned into Jews when they started keeping the feast of the Lord. It started calling them Jews. It said they became Jews. They became Jews. Um, I should pull that up. You can look over there in, in Esther. Um, maybe I'll give you a verse down in, in, in the thing. But it says they became Jews. And how do you become a Jew? How do you become Israel? 
by keeping the feast days, by o by obeying the, the rules, um, particularly the feast days, because, you know, there's, you know, a lot of rules in the Bible, but most of those are don't do commands, don't kill nobody, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Well, you can't look at an individual just because he's not, you know, committing adultery or stealing and say he's a child of God. No, you can't do that. That doesn't pass the dead man test, meaning that a dead man ain't going to steal. A dead man ain't going to kill nobody. That doesn't pass the dead man test in order to pass the dead man test you have to actually do something can a dead man keep the feast a dead man can't keep the feast a dead man can't keep the sabbath day holy a dead man can't afflict his soul on the sabbath on the atonement day a dead man can't sleep in a booth and so that's the only way you know the lord's people is if they are obeying these rules obeying these feast days particularly like i said these are the lord's feasts and when you look at second asterisk chapter two it says that we are sealed at these feasts. Um, we got given classes on it, how we are sealed during these feasts. We have to be during these feast days. That's how we become Israel. That's how we become Israel. We are Israel. We I don't care what color you look like. You know, it doesn't matter what race you are, where your people come from. Once you start obeying the rules, obeying the statutes, the judgments, the covenant, you are Israel. And the Israel are expected to dwell in booths. Like I said, if you're brand new, you may not get the opportunity to do this, but uh, but uh, let me be the first one to tell you, if you do it right this year, next year, you might have some land in order to, to, to dwell in a booth. You know, there's one individual asking me, how do I get land? Well, you know, the answer is you actually keep these feast days correctly, and then one day you'll get some land. Uh, in 2013, I wasn't doing the feast days correctly. I was fasting wrong. I wasn't sleeping in a tent. In 2013, uh, 14, I actually, you know, started sleeping in a booth for the first time. And by next year, 2015, I actually had my own land paid for land. I ain't making no payments on no land paid for, you know, and now, you know, we grow our own food or whatever. Obedience to the father, we get the promises of the Bible. And that's the stuff that he promises us. He doesn't promise us uh, Lexuses and new houses. And, you know, he doesn't promise us uh uh, what we would call good jobs I throw my hand quotes up He doesn't promise us good jobs He doesn't even promise that he's going to supernaturally remove us from the planet You know, he promises us uh, the earth He promises us land He promises us uh, food He promises something to drink You know, that clothes on our back These are the promises of the Lord And you see this stuff move pretty quickly You know, like when they left Egypt over there They was only out of Egypt for a year Before they was ready to go into the promised land Of course, they messed up, you know and people came back and said, talked about giants over there and how they was looking like grasshoppers and ruined it for them. And they ended up out there for 40 years. But you, that's how quickly this thing moves. Once you start obeying these rules and these covenants, you know, things move really quickly to you actually start getting your own land and your own stuff, you know. But anyway, uh, so we're actually supposed to dwell in booths for a week. You know, that means to sleep in a tent, you know, um, you there's people who actually build stuff, build themselves a, a little shelter. Um, we actually sleep in a tent. We got a little tent we got from Walmart or Academy. I can't remember where it came from exactly, but we had a couple of tents that we sleep in. Um, our entire family is outside um, at night in the tent for this entire week. Um, there's people that will be sleeping on the roof of their house or in the backyard of the house or whatever. But this is this is what we do. This is the other way of celebrating the um, uh, week long feast of tabernacles is by getting in these tents and sleeping in these tents for an entire week. And, you know, I believe that there's coming a day when the great earthquake is actually going to happen in a tent. That's believe that's why we're sleeping in the tent, because I believe that that earthquake is going to occur in the feast of tabernacles. I believe that's the purpose of it. You think about it. These are our father's people who are being obedient to the word and actually have left the comforts of their own house and actually went out in the backyard or somewhere and are now sleeping in a flimsy tent. Wouldn't that be the perfect time to have a global earthquake, which we're promised? Yeah, we're promised a global earthquake that's going to, to destroy, take underwater, Three quarters of all of the land mass on the earth, three quarters of the land mass of the earth is going away during this global earthquake. Now, you tell me, ain't that a big earthquake? Well, this is what we're expecting. And now, you know, wouldn't you expect the father to have his people protected? Well, he told them to be in a tent, didn't he? 
Didn't he tell him to be in a tent? Wouldn't that be the perfect time to do it? Is why all of his people were sleeping in a tent. All of them knuckleheads out there talking about we ain't supposed to be doing this and we ain't supposed to be doing that. They sitting up there in that luxury house or whatever while we have this huge earthquake and they're going to find themselves under some rubble. And the people that, you know, are afflicting their souls will be the one to come and pull them out of that rubble or whatever. Anyway, let's go on. Verse 43 says that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And I'm reminded of the verse. I can't really jump over to it right now. Um, maybe I'll put it down in the comment section. But I'm reminded of the verse that talks about how that, that we're not on, we're not always going to say it like this. We're not always going to say because he brought them out of Egypt. We're going to talk about how he brought us out of modern day Egypt. Have you heard of the modern day Exodus? It's going to be similar to the way it was back there in Egypt. You know, all of them. What is it? Uh, 3,500 years ago. This is actually about to happen to humanity now we're about to exit the beast systems just like it was back there in egypt there's going to be a bunch of plagues going to be a bunch of earthquakes the the um world economic systems are going to be destroyed just like the economic systems of uh Egypt was destroyed all of them years ago back there with Moses. This is about to happen now. And there's one place in the scripture that says that that's how people are going to remember this day. They're not going to say uh, they brought him out of Egypt that long time ago. We're going to be telling our children how he brought us out of Egypt in 2020 or brought us out of Egypt in 2021 or 2022 or whenever it happens. Anyway, we just want to be doing the right thing until that happens. Now, notice right there in verse 44, and it says, Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. These are the feast of the Lord. He, Moses told him. He didn't say these are my feasts. Mo these ain't the feasts of Moses. These are the feasts of the Lord, and we're supposed to be doing these feasts. Um, hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. Um, hit the subscribe button or that bell notification button because we will continue, Lord willing, we will continue to put out these classes as we get closer to these feast days, going into more and more detail. We've got a lot of information to cover and, and we'll try to knock it out in bits and pieces. This one was primarily about the dates, but we'll go into more detail in other classes. So get those uh, notifications when those classes come out. Uh, if you will, go ahead and pray for us. Uh, Godspeed and Shalom.